Hi, I'm Gina, creator and host of Feminine Roadmap Podcast, the podcast that is designed to have real talk around all things midlife and strategies to help us live a more vibrant second half. It is my deepest desire to help other people shift the conversation toward empowerment, toward vibrancy, toward excitement about what life has for us and what we can bring to the world, how we can each individually shine our light. So I invite you to grab a cup of something wonderful to join me each week or when you can and join me in my living room to have these conversations. And if you are enjoying this, please take the time to subscribe wherever you listen, rate my podcast, and share the episodes that help you, the episodes that encourage you. Let's build this community together. Welcome to my tribe. I'm so grateful you're here. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. Welcome back to Feminine Roadmap Podcast, the podcast that helps you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife and to live a more vibrant second half. And today, to help you with those goals, we are going to be talking about midlife fitness, the role that hormones play in our fitness, why fitness changes, why we need to change, what are the best practices in midlife, these things and more with my guest, Cam Euler. She is a health and fitness coach and a podcast co-host of Midlife Mamas. Cam, thank you so much for being here today. It's an honor to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you. Yes. So Cam is, um, we met through kind of a midlife podcasting Zoom call and we started following each other. And I thought, what a perfect guest to have on my show, because we can talk about her sweet spot, which is midlife fitness. And she said yes to me. So that's why she's here. And Cam, I would love to have you share why you are into this fitness. Like, how did you get started in it? And how did you get to this specific message of midlife fitness? Yeah. So I started exercising in the world of CrossFit in the year 2010. So in 2009, I left the elementary classroom (laughs) and I realized my marriage was in the toilet. And so when that happens and you're, I was 40, 41 at the time, I kind of like doubled down on everything. I'm like, how can I get out of my mind and in my body? And CrossFit was my answer. (laughs) And so I spent, I don't know, um, 11 years in the CrossFit gym. I was a coach. I was an athlete. And what happened over time was, um, to get out of my mind and into my body, I accidentally over-exercised myself into a hormonal nightmare. (laughs) Oh, so what you're saying is you can actually fitness too much. Fitness is just as bad as too little fitness. Exactly. And I didn't know that because in my mind I was exercising and I was eating fairly decently. So how in the world could that, that you know, these side effects be happening when I was doing quote unquote, the right things. Mm -hmm. That is really interesting. So give me a little snippet of that journey. So you were doing CrossFit, which for anybody who doesn't know, it is hardcore. There's like (laughs) ropes and tires and Uh, deadlifting of giant weights. It's like intense. Yeah. And I loved it because it was so much better to be in my body than in my mind and, you know, leaving my teaching career and trying to figure out if my marriage was going to make it or not. So I loved it. And, and my body responded. I had never picked up a barbell until I was 41 years old. And I was just, I absolutely loved it. So fast forward, I would say it was about 2016. I started noticing strange injuries, I was losing hair. My skin was really dry. I was super tired all the time. Like no amount of coffee was working. I was drinking coffee literally all day. Many times I would coach in the morning and then I would coach in the afternoon and that middle lag time. I was like, what am I going to do? I need some energy. So I was definitely using caffeine (laughs) for that situation. And all like also had unexplained weight gain. So I was like, what is happening? Why, you know, I'm a fit human. I've been doing this for a long time. What is going on with my body? So during an annual checkup, just an annual checkup, I had just moved to Kentucky and went to the doctor and she said, have you ever had your thyroid checked? And I was like, what's my thyroid? I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. And lo and behold, I came back hypothyroidism. So that would explain some of my physical symptoms I was having. Mm. You know, we're finding 
in this day and age that that's actually becoming an extremely common problem, even in younger mm-hmm. men and women. The thyroid mm-hmm. is kind of going off the rails, which is an interesting conversation that we may not be able to have in depth. But yeah, that is a big part because it manages, monitors, it's your metabolism, your hormones, your body temperature. It's a powerful little organ. Yes. And that was another thing. I was always cold. So that's another sign that something's off the rails there. It seems to me that the thyroid is the first thing to fall, if you will. Um, And it all comes back to being under stress. So I was under emotional stress from my life. I was under physical stress from exercise and my body, it was just too much. It was too much. (laughs) So how did you transition then from doing that kind of fitness and that kind of focus into your life to what you're doing now? So it took a minute and, um, every now and then I'll still stick my toe in the CrossFit world and I'll end up on the couch for a couple of days. And I'm like, yeah, it's not for you. I love the way it feels in the moment. I just don't love the way it feels (laughs) in the days afterward. So, you know, so first of all was my thyroid. And then, um, a little bit later on, I was diagnosed with fibroids and at the age of 50, I was almost 50. It was a 49, the end of 49. I looked about five months pregnant (laughs) at a uterus full of fibroids, which is again, a side effect of, um, being under immense stress for now. It was almost, uh, eight years of a lot of stress in my life. And, um, so I ended up having a complete hysterectomy. So the ironic thing about that is the same time I had signed up for, um, that when I had my surgery the week before I signed up to go back to school to become an integrative nutrition health coach, because I'm like, this doesn't add up. There has to be more to this story. (laughs) Mm. Now for people who don't know, tell me, tell us what integrative health is and does. So it's a whole body approach. It's not, you know, what is causing it's going, you know, going back to the root cause or what's, what's at the bottom. And for years and years, uh, I remember using birth control pills to control hormonal acne or antibiotics to control acne. And that's just a sign that something else was wrong with my body. And I was using medicine to mask. And also I used exercise to mask (laughs) what was really going on at the root cause. Mm. So what would it look like if somebody, what's the difference? So we're used to, you go to the doctor, Mm -hmm. you got a chart, you got 15 questions Mm -hmm. and a prescription. Mm -hmm. So integrative looks at your whole life. So I, I call it lifestyle medicine. So it's about your sleep and it's about your nutrition. How do you move? How do you exercise? What are your thoughts? How's your social life? you know, what's your family like? Are you satisfied in your career? Uh, so it's all of those pieces. Financials are part of it as well. So it's like a holistic, all of those things add up to well-being. and, um, integrative nutrition has a chance to look at all of those things where we, uh, I, re- I read on Instagram lately, if your doctor doesn't ask you about your sleep and your exercise, are they just a drug dealer? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talked before I hit record of my journey with my mother-in-law briefly. And I think that was probably the most in my lifetime that mm-hmm. I've engaged with the medical world. And while I had a couple of doctors who were just stellar, I mean, amazing. Mm-hmm. I was on a road trip and this one doctor, he was on my mother-in-law's floor for like seven or nine days. He called me every day because mm-hmm. I was calling every day. And if he missed me, he would call back. Now, this is a doctor working in a hospital, one of the biggest mm-hmm. hospitals in our area. And I was just blown away by the level of input, mm-hmm. information, care. He partnered with me. I I was just like, who is this man? Give him an award, right? Mm -hmm. Because most Mm -hmm. of my experience was, oh, this happens to all old people. Here's a prescription. Exactly. And I live like that for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. I think midlife women, there's Mm -hmm. doctors will admit there's no training Mm -hmm. or very, I mean, it's, it's like a drop in the bucket. And so unless if we're not going to someone who really knows what they're doing, I don't think we're getting good medical care as women for our, all of these things you're talking about, the thyroid, the fibroids, the everything that's happening in the female body is so complex Mm -hmm. that it's hard to find someone who knows 
and cares. I know it sounds it's, harsh. Sorry. It, it, it's the truth. There are 34 um, symptoms of menopause and traditional doctors are trained to treat three of those 34 symptoms. And many times women will go to the doctor and they'll come home with hormonal birth control or anxiety medication for menopause symptoms. And that is not that is not going to help you long term. <laughs> What's really going on, right? <laughs> you know, it's true when you mention the anxiety medication. They they basically, if you look back in history, remember they used to put women in insane asylums around right. about midlife. Yep, absolutely. We're mm-hmm. not putting them in buildings. We're putting them in places where they're just trying to numb mm-hmm. the feeling. When I I want to talk about and 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 just a disclaimer for anyone who's listening, I'm not judging you for taking medication because mm-hmm. I am not a doctor. What I am is a woman who's wondering is there a better way? Mm -hmm. And if it's not working or you're not feeling like yourself, what are the other options? I'm trying to open up the door to, Hey, if, if you're not feeling right, or if you feel frustrated, there is another way. And so that's where this integrative conversation comes in. I think it takes a little longer than a prescription Mm -hmm. and that may be the challenge. There's a little bit more of a journey involved because it really is kind of like digging, right. To figure Mm -hmm. it out. Right. And if you are, if you are willing to put the time in and pausing long enough to hear what your body's saying, your body is giving you feedback all the time. And it's like connecting the dots. There's not just one blanket answer. We all have a, we all have different biologies and we have different feedback, but if we can connect those dots, you can feel better by, you know, dialing in on your sleep, changing the way you exercise and changing the way you think about your body that is a big one for sure. Mm, that mindset piece mm-hmm. is so <laughs> powerful, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Your body's not failing you. Your body's communicating to you and let's figure out what it's saying and what can we change? And then you can feel more like yourself again. <laughs> your body is not failing you. It's Mm-mm. communicating with you. hmm Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about some of that communication, what that looks like. So maybe women can be like, Hey, I think, I think that's what I've been hearing. So for example, if you eat a meal and you feel tired and you feel bloated and you feel gassy, whatever you just ate, isn't for you. That's not your body. Didn't that's not what your body wanted at the time. So after, you know, keeping track of those things, you can decide what foods make you feel amazing and your brain works and you're not hungry for a few hours and you have great energy, you can put together your own quote unquote diet. Cause I don't really believe in diets. I believe everyone is so unique. You have your own unique and I, you know, I can help with guidelines, but guidelines are just guidelines. You're unique into yourself. So you can come up with meals and you know, for example, what makes you feel amazing. If you lean towards those foods or lean away from the other foods that don't make you feel so great. Isn't sometimes it's roulette. You're like, I know, <laughs> I know I won't feel good, but I really want this. And I think, you know, the 80, 20 principle, right? The Pareto yeah. principle, if you yeah. can nail your life and nutrition, 80% of the time, how mm-hmm. much, where are you above the na- national average? And then also I'd like to add, if you're walking into that meal, knowing you're going to feel crummy afterwards, that's half the battle because you're aware, (laughs) you're aware of yourself. So good job. (laughs) job. At least you're honest with yourself. At least you're honest. (laughs) Yeah. All of these things are connected. And like I was sharing a story earlier about exercise Um, on January 1st, my husband and I did a workout and it was a CrossFit workout. And I went through the whole thing. I, I slept well. I had good energy. I had eaten, you know, I was hydrated. I was ready to go. There was rest built into the workout. And even then I was exhausted for two days, three days afterwards. So even then you can still have all, think you have all the answers and still get it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Isn't that interesting though, mm-hmm. how at some point in your life it worked it doesn't always stay the same forever. And I'm wondering, especially when it comes to exercise, right? Mm -hmm. We find a routine. We like it. We're used to it. Mm -hmm. That flexibility of exercise, not flexible, well, physical flexibility. Yes. But I'm thinking that ability to say, okay, I've been doing this, you know, back in the day, let's go way back to aerobics and leg warmers. Yeah. (laughs) When Uh the whole world was doing aerobics and leg warmers and French cut, you know, leggings, Um, so it's kind of like, that was something that I did 
Mm-hmm. And and it, it kind of worked then, but it didn't work for everybody. Like it was hard for some people's bodies to do that kind of fitness. And so I think, how do you feel about, I, I think I could probably guess, but <laughs> how about this? Let's talk about fitness trends and mm-hmm. the wisdom that it takes. How do you get to know yourself well enough to make a good decision fitness wise? Well, when it comes to midlife or like midlife fitness protocol would include like the base of it would be moving, walking, hiking, just like plain old movement. That is the base of your movement. We call it neat. It's a non-exercise activity in your life. It keeps your hormones, stress hormones low. It keeps your hunger hormones low. It's your, you know, if you're tracking your steps, it's that. So that's the base. I call that movement. It's not considered like exercise. The second layer is definitely strength training. So strength training two to three times a week. If you're in menopause, probably two times a week. If you're in perimenopause, maybe you can get away three. And we're talking like half hour sessions. We're not, it's not like it used to be hours in the gym. That's not what I'm talking about in midlife. We do not have the bandwidth for that kind of stress. (laughs) So, you know, strength training is beneficial in so many ways. It helps you control your blood sugar. It helps with um, building your bones. It helps contain, you know, maintain your muscle mass and also the confidence that comes from, you know, being fit, like you have knowing how to move your body through, I say time, space, and gravity because of lifting weights. And then finally, like the last element would be sprinkling in some cardio or some intensity training. And that's only like 45 minutes a week, not a day, not, not a, you know, so it's 45 minutes a week is about where you need to be in menopause when it comes to interval training. Oh, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I think diet culture tells us like, if you're in midlife and you're noticing that your belly is expanding and you feel a little fluffier in the middle, first of all, that's, that's something that happens. So then be curious about yourself. What are you doing? What are you eating? How are you exercising? Be curious. But in midlife, um, if you have, if you're noticing that strength training comes first, it, it, it boosts your metabolism. And also if you're under, if you're, feeling more bloated in your belly, that could be a sign that your body's under stress. And I think diet culture tells us, oh, if I'm feeling this way, I need to eat less and exercise more. I need to go hit the treadmill. I need to go do extreme cardio exercise. And in midlife that tends to backfire and gets the exact opposite of what you were trying to achieve. Mm, Didn't you just do a post on that on Instagram? (laughs) Probably, (laughs) probably about, about how extreme dieting and exercise increases cortisol. Absolutely. And cortisol is a storage hormone and guess where it stores it right in your belly. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Boy, do we have some serious (laughs) fat in our belly. It's really fascinating. I can, I can see how Mm -hmm. the last four years that I went through with my Mm -hmm. mother-in-law, how it affected both my husband and my body. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all connected. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about integration. Like you can say, okay, so that emotional thing also changed my physical body. They're all connected. All you just have to learn how to connect the dots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's getting back into a habit or even starting a habit. Have Mm -hmm. you seen that gal on Instagram, Joan, who didn't start exercising till she was in her seventies. No, her daughter, find her. Yeah. her daughter is actually a, a fitness competitor mm-hmm. and she saw that her mom, I'll have to, I'll put it in the notes and then I'll also share it with you. Perfect. Her mom was basically on all these medications and the daughter was like, mom, I know we can get you off these medications. Let me help you. And now she's got like a fitness page. She's like 74 <laughs> yeah. and she's the cutest thing you've ever seen. And then they've started an app and they have a fitness, you know, uh-huh. they're connected with clothing and supplements, but it's like, you know, she had never, like you said, mm-hmm. you hadn't really done anything till 40. Well, she hadn't until 71. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, she's leading women. It's amazing. And Absolutely. So that's encouraging that you, you just have to start. It does. You don't have to do it all, be it all, know it all. Right. It's that movement, like five pound barbells. Let's talk about, let's talk about strength training. Cause women, some women do have an aversion to weights because of what they think weights do. Let's talk about weights in midlife. 
Yeah. So, so the, the misconception is that weights are going to make you bulky and that's just, we don't have the hormones for that. And I also would like to mention one more thing about cortisol. So in midlife in perimenopause, your estrogen is going on this roller coaster ride Mm -hmm. and estrogen is like our warrior, our protector against stress. So in menopause, when estrogen as is at its lowest, we just don't have that buffer, that, that guard against stress. And so that's why cortisol even plays a bigger role. So when it comes to weightlifting, you know, sets in the eight to 12 rep range is excellent. Um, making sure that there's plenty of rest when you are lifting weights, you do want to feel your muscle burn. Cause that's how we build muscles and our muscles get stronger through that process, but it is not, it is not CrossFit. It's not a hundred reps of something. It's not like that. <laughs> I promise. And it's not big weights, right? You can do five, 10 pound barbells, but it's, you want to, don't you want to push to where Mm -hmm. the last couple of reps you're like, "Uh." yep, exactly. So the last two or three reps should be challenging and form is always most important because we're more prone to injury in midlife. That's just one of the consequences. So we need definitely need to be in tune. And actually I love moving slower. Like, so there's a mind body connection while you're moving And and if you don't have, if you're able to lift heavier weights, but you don't have that at your house, just simply moving slower keeps your muscles under tension longer. And again, we want the last couple reps, two or three reps to be challenging. Like, okay, I'm building my muscles. (laughs) That's what we're trying to aim for. I know one of the things that I've learned is you focus on the muscle, like you imagine the muscle doing its job while you're doing it. Yeah. I love, I I love going slower versus the CrossFit world that I was in for so long, like feeling my body move. Like I said earlier, your body's not failing you. Your body is this amazing, beautiful place where your, your soul lives and learning how to take care of it in the life change. You know, it requires some changing, like how we think about ourselves, but exercise is not a punishment. And I think that's one of the things I hope to help women with that. You don't have to do hours of exercise in order to be fit and vibrant in midlife. It's just, you just don't have to. Mm. And there's a lot of options to, Mm -hmm. to support the diet and the exercise. There's healthy supplements, Mm -hmm. things that are really helpful for Like I'll be talking to someone about a supplement that is, they have an app and a supplement so you can track your symptoms and Mm -hmm. they can, you can kind of see what's happening in your life. So there's a lot of tools out there because Mm -hmm. it is kind of, I'm making a big O with my arms for people who can't see me. (laughs) It's like midlife is this giant world Mm -hmm. that you have what your body's doing, what your mind is doing, what your hormones are doing what's happening in your marriage and your parents. And like, it's just this giant wheel in so many spokes. And so I think learning, like you keep saying, listen to your body. Mm -hmm. How can women learn to listen to their body? Because I think we are, we are busy being firefighters at this Mm -hmm. season in our life. Yes. And so there's an acronym called SHMEC. And I actually learned this from uh, Jade Tita. Dr. Jade Tita was my metabolism certification coach. And so SHMEC stands for S stands for sleep. So are you falling asleep? Are you staying asleep? Are you waking up? Do you feel wired and tired? Um, So checking in with your sleep. And also in midlife, our body really likes to go to bed about the same time and wake up about the same time within an hour or so. And, um, so that's one thing you can definitely do for your body, for your sleep. That's one that keeps your cortisol down too, by the way. (laughs) Um, so that's first. And then the H stands for hunger and I'm going to clump it with the C. So hunger and cravings are two other things that you can check in. Are you hungry? When are you hungry or or is that a craving or are you craving something else? Is it like an emotional reason why you want the bag of chips? So, you know, pausing and really like, okay, am I hungry? Do I want something salty or am I craving fat? I went through a stage years ago where I wanted French fries all the time. And really what it was really about was I needed more fat in my diet. And so once I put put those together and then I could give my body healthy fats, like avocados or whatever, then my French fry craving disappeared. So that's just one example. (laughs) And then the M and the E stands for mood and energy. So those are other places you can check. How's your mood? So 
you know, when you were having a menstrual cycle, you were probably more moody right before your bleed. And that's because progesterone is more in charge at that time of your cycle. So from ovulation until your bleed, progesterone was more in control. And then from your bleed to ovulation, estrogen was more in control. And those hormones definitely have an impact on our mood for certain and also our cravings that's also connected in there. Um, yeah. So your mood is, you know, how, what's my body saying? Am I grumpy? It, do I feel grumpy when I'm around that person? Cause that's also biofeedback or do I feel energized and happy about being around this person? That's also a biofeedback and then the ease energy. So it typically in the mid afternoon, I would say around three o'clock, a lot of women have like an energy slump. And a lot of times it's your body needs energy. So if you are, if you give into that craving, you may go grab something out of the kitchen. That's like cheap and cheap, cheap energy, like something processed, you know, or, you know, with a cup of mint tea or an apple with some nut butter also satisfy my body's need for energy and also be friendly to my body, like hormonal wise. Mm -hmm. So it's schmeck. Schmeck. <laughs> yeah. The, the C is the cravings at the end, but I, 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 uh, I lumped hunger and cravings together. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then also those, in addition to those biofeedback markers, you also have, um, your libido would be definitely included in that. So, you know, there's other ways that your body's communicating to you, but that's a good start. <laughs> So if you're craving fatty things, consider mm -hmm. moving mm -hmm. to a healthier fat. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's it. Or is it salty, you know, and, and lately I've been adding uh, sea salt into my morning water and it's so satisfying and sea salt has a ton of minerals and minerals help your body function better. Mm -hmm. So if you are craving something salty, give that a try just do like one little spin of your, you know, your sea salt in your water and see if that doesn't help you. Maybe your body needs that. Um, I guess it's really about being curious and being willing to connect the dots instead of just taking a pill for something. I was looking at um, different sea salts recently because I was needing salt and I typically use pink salt, pink medicine, mm -hmm. you know, the Himalayan salt. It turns out that if you research salt, because we do need iodine, our thyroid needs iodine, and some of these don't have naturally occurring iodine. You can get iodized salt, but you can get iodine in other ways. What's interesting, as I talk in circles here, is I was researching a French sea salt over a Himalayan pink sea salt. Mm -hmm. And the um, minerals, you know, what, what the components are in that salt and what you're looking for and, and, and the benefit. So not all salts are the same. Correct. Even though they're both healthy, they had totally different profiles. Sure. And then there's Redmond's um, mountain salt, which is from the West part of the United States. I'm not sure which state it's from. Sounds like Washington. May, I mean, I'm not sure. I know it's West, but um, so that's hand, that's hand mined salt. So that salt has a different mineral component and the way it's mined, there's no explosive. So there's no like plastics mm. in your salt, for example. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. So see the salt, that's just one tiny, teeny mm -hmm. thing that you can do the research and figure out because I think a lot of people are mineral deficient. Sure. And I think we're afraid lifestyle. of salt. I think we're afraid of salt, but packaged mm -hmm. food that the salt that's in, you know, something that's a frozen dinner or something is way different than the sea salt or the mountain salt that we're referring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's mm -hmm. like fat, fat and salt have both been <laughs> vilified, right? Yeah. Let's talk about fat for a second. Fat dietary fat does not make your body fat. In fact, all of your hormones originate from fat, from cholesterol. And so having healthy fats in your diet is definitely part of midlife health. It has to be. <laughs> well, that in your brain, right? Uh, absolutely. It feeds your brain. Your brain. Fat. Yeah. And also when we're going back to Schmeck, fat helps you feel satisfied for longer. And so curious, you know, if I eat a breakfast and I'm hungry again early, like in an hour or two, typically when I go back and say, okay, what did I eat? And it's usually I was missing fat. And if I had added avocado or guacamole, or I cooked something in coconut oil, then I would have been satisfied for longer. So, you know, just going back and saying, okay, what was that? Be curious about yourself. Mm, I found a new product. It's a creamer that is grass fed butter and MCT oil. Love it. And I think maybe coconut water, but it's thick like cream. 
mm-hmm. and it's not sweet. Uh-huh. And Beautiful. I'm like, I love it. And I was uh-huh. actually thinking, oh, I bet I could like make sauces with this. Mm-hmm. I love it. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. yeah MTC oil is another thing you can add to your coffee in the morning to feed your brain. <laughs> now, MCT yes. oil is a derivative of coconut, right? Correct. But it is, is a super food for your brain. Absolutely. Yes. And grass fed butter too. So I think in midlife, the quality of our food matters even more um, because our tolerance for stress is, is lower. So processed foods tend to have like a more of a hangover effect, if you will. And so grass fed butter, for example, or grass fed beef, or they, the omega threes in those foods are different than their counterpart, their conventionally raised counterpart. And so omega threes is great because it helps us fight inflammation in our body, which is like the root of all bad things. <laughs> really, <laughs> mm, That's true. There, mm-hmm. there's a lot of conversation around hidden inflammation. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. sometimes that, that shows up like in the way our joints feel mm-hmm. stiffness, sluggishness, right? Absolutely. And I notice I do supplement with omega threes. If I miss some, or I, ch- I change my brand, my skin feels drier. So I feels like it oils me up from the inside out <laughs> as far as the omega threes go. So that's another side effect of <laughs> being hypothyroidism is dry skin. How about collagen? I use collagen daily. So collagen has so many health benefits as far as your skin, your nails, your hair, which, you know, awesome, but there's also research that it supports your joints. And this is why I started it for your gut health. And so I, I was fighting hormonal acne, like forever, (laughs) for as long as I can remember. And when I realized, and I researched that, that collagen can help actually heal and seal your gut. And that might help my acne. That was, that's why I started it. Plus it's a good dose of protein. So you're starting your day with protein. And if you start your day on the right foot, then the rest of the day tends to go better. So if you're starting your day with carby carbs, you're going to spike and crash all day. And you're going to crave more and more of those things all day. And if you just start your day on the right foot with some protein and some healthy fats, you're going to feel so much better. (laughs) Mm. I was telling my family, it's like everything quick is crappy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's really that, well, besides fruit, but some people can't eat fruit all day. Like it's not the best choice for them. Mm -hmm. So there's that, like, for me, protein is a very big part of stabilizing Mm -hmm. my particular body. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't, I, I can't go full blown, like caveman only meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I, I was going through a health thing and I was trying to figure it out and I knew it felt like it was connected to food. Mm-hmm. And I got curious and I tried different things and clearly an all protein diet made me feel like a brick. Yeah. Right. But I did figure out mm-hmm. that protein is an important, it kind of keeps you satiated if you have the it right does. kind of protein right. and it keeps your blood sugar a little more balanced. Like if you have a carb with a protein, it's better than just having the carb, but it's like quick protein. It is getting better, mm-hmm. but what are some great go-to quick things or things you can prepare in advance that are quick. You don't have to stop and cook it. Right. So in the protein world, um, collagen is how I start my day in coffee. So that's 20 grams, two scoops is 20 grams for me. And then like, before we hit record on this, I did some Greek yogurt, which is a great, the plain Greek yogurt has a lot of protein in it. And then I was like, why not? So I took a scoop of, it was a vegetarian or vegan protein powder, mixed it in And I put some hemp hearts in there. So protein is in hemp hearts as well. And the protein powder plus the yogurt. And I mixed it and it was kind of like a pudding. Uh Um, I did, I did add a little plant milk just to make it a little looser. Um, and it was awesome. I'll do that again. So I think part of it is like having some things on board at your house that you can mix and match, be curious. Like I feel great. So, um, that was a good, that was a good meal. So I'll add that to my rotation. Eggs are a great one too. I find, I find that when I eat eggs, I feel great. Yeah. How about intermittent fasting and bone broth? Those two topics that works well for a lot of people in my life. So I'm curious what you use it for, or if you use it at all in your, your routine. So when it comes to exercise, intermittent fasting and exercising may not, that might be too much stress on your midlife body in general. Um, my biggest suggestion is just eating with the daylight, like eat when it's daylight. (laughs) So, um, and that's automatically intermittent fasting. Our digestion is more active in the morning. And so I think that's where some people get it wrong, where they don't start eating until noon 
or, or they're exercising and then they're still not eating until noon. And so they feel that stress and they, it's too much. I think intermittent fasting has a place. I think there, we are so used to having food available at all times, but if you just kind of shift your eating window to earlier in the day and then shut it down, when it go, the sun goes down, you're going to be good to go. <laughs> Yeah. So it is intermittent fasting. It, it really is, but it's using the daylight. So I think a lot of times intermittent fasters don't start until noon and you've just missed the biggest window of opportunity. And I just want to go back for a minute. Your cortisol naturally rises in the morning. And so it, that's the best time to exercise in the morning when your cortisol is actually already high. But if you're doing that fasted, that's too, maybe too much stress on your body. So exercise is stress. Your cortisol is already high because that's your natural rhythm. And then you don't have food on board. That may be too much stress in midlife. It may work when you're in 30 or 40, but at some point you may find diminishing returns. <laughs> so it's at its highest in the morning. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor as a self-experiment since um, October. I took a break. I got married in December. I didn't want to wear it in my wedding dress, but I've been wearing it constantly since mid-December. And it's been fascinating to see how my body responds in real time to food and exercise and actually stress. So if I have stressful thoughts, um, my blood sugar will jack up. And I know that's normal. <laughs> oh, fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Your body doesn't know the difference between physical stress or mental stress. We react the same. And again, in midlife, we're more sensitive to stress. So managing that in all forms is important. Mm, I think that naturally lends itself to the conversation around mindfulness, meditation, yoga, the more gentle mm -hmm. kind of slow down and listen to your body, like learn to tune in to what's going on. I totally agree. So I exercised this morning and then afterwards I did legs up the wall, which is a pose from yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great way to like, I had my hand on my chest and one on my belly and I had my legs up the wall and just breathing and being present and doing one thing at a time. Well, <laughs> is another kind of one of my life midlife mottos it's okay to take a break. And then I, you know, then I got ready for our recording here and it was just, it set the stage for the rest of my day. Mm. That do one thing at, at a time. Well, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, no, I can't only do one thing. Right. I mean, isn't that like, yeah. midnight, you feel like you can't. Right. But maybe when you were 30 and 40, it was like a badge of honor to juggle all the things. <laughs> and yeah, I don't have the bandwidth and I don't even care to have the bandwidth anymore. <laughs> so let me finish one thing at a time. Let me, um, one of my business coaches is like, you're building a bridge. So if you have five bridges, but you never reach the Island, then what's the purpose build one bridge to the Island and then go back and build another bridge to the next Island, <laughs> you know, just one thing at a time. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, I love it. <laughs> it's so true, though. Mm -hmm. We feel we do feel like it's a badge of honor, don't we? That's a really good point. And that is a that is a health and wellness conversation. Mm -hmm. What are we doing with our mental energy as well as our physical energy? Absolutely. We don't have to do all the things. And I think like getting on getting on your health and wellness journey in midlife is simply is it's easy as taking one step, one thing going for a walk or thinking about the meal you just had. Was it good for me or was it not good for me? It's just one little decision at a time. Mm. Which is pretty much mindfulness, right? Being present with everything. Yeah. I agree. Yes. I would contend, and I'm sure that you agree with me on this, that if you take 10 minutes to take a walk, like it does not have to be a five mile walk. Nope. Mm -mm. In that 10 minutes, if you can practice quieting the mind. Yeah. <laughs> right? Practice mm -hmm. the shushing. Shoo, 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 shoo. Yeah. Listen to the birds. Listen to the, the, feel the breeze, you know, those kinds of things. That's actually a whole different kind of exercise <laughs> while yeah, you're walking. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I try to put space between my thoughts and it doesn't always work, but when it happens, it's like, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> space between my thoughts. 
I Ooh. like that. Ah, oh, space between my thoughts. You're coming too close <laughs> together. <laughs> You're too, yeah, too much. Yeah. Too much. So everybody sit down. We're going to raise our hands. Yeah. <laughs> it also reminds me of just when we were talking about exercise, slowing the movement down and like feeling your body move and your muscles work. And yeah, it's, it's very rewarding. <laughs> I have really fallen in love with yoga. I use, I've, I always talk about her yoga with Adrian. She mm-hmm. had a bang up year last year. She was like on the front of time magazine, but she's just a very gentle practice. Like Mm -hmm. there's some beautiful yoga out there in positions. I can't even imagine my body (laughs) getting into. Right. I know. (laughs) And so when I say yoga, you got to understand that that is, I I'm not, I'm not standing on my head. I I had a guest. She does a handstand a day, every day. She's older Mm -hmm. than me. But for me, I think that there's, there's a conversation around flexibility, mm-hmm. not just physical flexibility, but emotional flexibility and, and being on the mat for t- literally just 20 minutes a day. Yo- yoga with Adrian is totally doable. Mm-hmm. That's like a safe space. She always says you're on the mat, just visualize putting everything else away. Right. So I think there's a correlation with flexibility, not just in our bodies, but in our minds and our emotions that midlife really, we need to be mindful of. I agree with you. And, and change, just changing, why is this happening to me and change it to why is this happening for me? What can I learn from this? What can I learn about my body and myself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not gloom or doom. Midlife is amazing. <laughs> well, and just the curiosity piece that you keep bringing up is I think that flexibility piece, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like, just because we've always done things this way, or our family's done things this way, or it's expected of me, you know, just getting more curious and flexing a little bit in what that definition is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It pays off. The dividends are amazing. It pays off. You feel better. You have more energy. You have more bandwidth for the things that matter instead of nonsense that you put in your head. (laughs) So what is it that you would love people to take away? If there were three things that were the most important for you to, for people to plug into, what would those be? I would say pause long enough to be curious about your body, ask yourself questions. And I believe that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. So ask yourself better questions and pause and see what, what comes up, what bubbles up for you. Mm. So that's one. Second, um, move your body, move your body, not because you ate something, not as punishment, because your body is this beautiful place and you deserve to feel whole and vibrant and movement will help you sleep better. It will help your confidence. It's just, it should just be the base of your life. Just move because you, because you can. And then finally, along with the movement lines, I I'm a big advocate of strength training. So strength training is going to help you reach your goals that you want physically and also confidence. It will help with bone density. It will help with your metabolism. It'll help regulate your blood sugar. And there's so many benefits from strength training. So I I would say those are my big three takeaways. And how can people find you cam? So I'm on Instagram. I'm Hey mama underscore cam. Um, I love Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. <laughs> same name. Hey, Mama Cam. I've been playing with TikTok because just because you're 53 doesn't mean you can't be on TikTok. <laughs> so, um, and then I also have a website. So, CamOiler.com. And that's C A M as in Mary O Y L E R. Correct. Yes. And she's M O M M A. Uh huh. Mama. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and also our podcast is released every Wednesday. It's called Midlife Mamas and we're on all major platforms. And I have a a co-host, her name is Amelia and um, Amelia and I talk about midlife stuff. (laughs) That's amazing. Go support her. They've had 35 episodes as of our conversation. By the time we, by the time you hear this, they'll have a few more, but um, absolutely has been such a joy to spend time. I feel like we've known each other for so long. It was so easy and comfortable and Well, it's like a good start to my day. Thank you so much, Cam. Gina, this was an honor. I enjoyed every minute. Awesome. Friends, today I've been speaking with Cam Euler. She is a health and fitness coach, and she is the podcast co-host of Midlife Mamas. If you head over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 262, I will have links to Cam and her website and her 
Instagram. And while you're there, if you leave your name and email address, I send out very periodic emails and encouragement. Friends, this is one of those conversations that is not meant to make you feel like you're being beat up over the head or to make you feel like you're failing or to make you feel like there's just one more thing you got to add to your list. This is a gentle, loving journey that Cam is encouraging you to take. It has to do with being willing to pause and listen and tune into your body's voice and take that partnership journey with your body. Don't beat yourself up. We all need to stop looking at the size of our clothes and we need to be thinking about who we are as a person, mind, body, and spirit. Rethink, retool, reapproach how we see life in ourselves and really enjoy this season that we've been gifted called midlife. Thank you so much for being with us today. We look forward to sharing more and more encouragement with you in the weeks to come. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.